Today on the Badassery Podcast, we're sitting down with Tyler Harris. So Tyler, you have like a long list of accomplishments. So <laughs> you do the Daily Bread vlog, you have two podcasts, you're president of No Hook Media, and you have the Breadwinner and the Sales Wolves podcast. And I really just tried to like sum it all up, but I don't know <laughs> if I can. <laughs> That's it. That's, and there's, oh man, there's probably more. I'm, I also own a life insurance company, uh, our agency and I'm national coordinator there. So that's, that's the full-time, the full-time gig. This other stuff is just the, uh, the added bonus, the added fun and the value add for me. Okay. So I've got to ask you the question. So today we're kind of bringing a little bit of testosterone to the Badassery podcast. Yes. <laughs> Most of our audience is female entrepreneurs <laughs> and a lot of women in business and women in business, they kind of have a different barriers to go through than let's say you might have, right? Yep. Is this something you've noticed in the female entrepreneur space and even the podcasters, vloggers, are you starting to see it shift at all where women are kind of becoming a little more equal, a little more out there than men? Like what, I just love to hear your thoughts on this. Yeah. I'm, I'm so glad you asked this because literally 15 minutes before we started this podcast, uh, my business partner uh, came into my office and we were talking about, we just started running a new uh, recruiting ad for our business. And that's for recruiting life insurance agents across the country. And in the recruiting ad, we have, people that have done well in our business talk about the business and they're not talking about specifically like, Oh, I made this much money and this and this and that, but more like how they feel about the company and the, the atmosphere that they're in. And in that, in that newest video, we had, let's see, four women, three men speaking in that. And so we launched this video about a week and a half ago and we're seeing the applicants come pouring in and we've never had so many women applicants ever before. I was just actually looking in my email and over the last 25, 19 of them were female. Um, and the interesting thing is I found myself not really knowing how to feel about that. Um, traditionally because of who we serve in the environments that we're in, it's, it's traditionally been very much male dominated. Uh, but our, one of our top, our top, let's see, our top one slash number two kind of back and forth and our number three slash number four uh, are female. And what I know in, in their business within what we do is they crush it. Like they absolutely crush it and they own it. And to me, there's a level of sophistication and I know it sounds silly, but there's like this level of sophistication that they bring to the business that they're not just like, Oh, me go sell policy, me get money, me happy. <laughs> you know, like they bring this level of sophistication and almost like elegance to what we do. They like make it look way better than it can when a man's out there doing it. And I love that. Like there's certain positions within our company, like here at our home office, I work out of our corporate office and here um, it's 90 plus percent um, female. And there's certain positions that we've always kind of looked at like a COO type position where we would always want a female in that, in that role because of just their different viewpoint uh, on different things that we're doing as a business and human resources and all these different aspects and pushing the uh, business forward. Uh, I think it's becoming almost crazy to me th this conversation of like, does a female have the same ability to succeed in the exact same business as a male. Like I look at that as like, that's the craziest, <laughs> that's the craziest thing I could ever even try to answer um, because 1000% um, they do. And I think anyone that's kind of holding on to those old, 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 old ways of thinking, um, they're going to fade out quickly. Uh, and, and that's an exciting time to be in. And, and I couldn't be happier than to go out and do the business that I'm in and have female counterparts doing the exact same thing and crushing it and crushing, like I'm extremely competitive. So like when anyone tries to like encroach on my, you know, top 10 for that lit, for that week or, or this contest that we're running during that particular quarter, I don't care if it's a male or female, like I want to dominate them. Uh, but I just love the fact that I don't even, I don't even see it as male and female, like, Oh crap, Wendy is, is almost beating me this quarter. I just look at it as like, Oh crap, someone's almost beating me this quarter. Like it does, it doesn't even, it doesn't even register uh, in my brain, but specifically when you're talking about podcasts, um, I think there's so many different skills within communication 
those interpersonal skills uh, that women bring to the podcasting uh, and vlogging uh, world uh, that I've, that I'm, I, I think is a huge, huge asset. Um, and I think that that's something that men are going to have to figure out <laughs> for themselves or they're going to get left in the dust. Um, but it's an exciting time. And, and I think it's, it's about time. Uh, but I don't even look at like that. Those thoughts never, other than being on this podcast and having this question asked, it's not, it's never a thought that ever like goes into my brain on a daily basis. think that part of that whole idea of the need to to put other like other people first and it's all external facing instead of internal with you and your family do you think part of that has to do with the constructs that society puts on the men the male role like is that so important like how do you think that i know i don't want to bring, yeah. bring gender back into no, it no, but it's fine. what i'm what i'm hearing is like mm -hmm. we we talk about in the bad you know the badassery lifestyle where we're women we're mothers we take care of ourselves we do all this and we can make money and have yep. a business and run all these things but when i've talked to other men or i've seen other men it's more like the career it's all about the career and family is the side note instead yep. of with a woman it's like the family's the and the life is the focus with the businesses the side note how do you think that that dynamic is kind of i think that's helped or hurt you <laughs> yeah no i i don't know if it's helped or hurt me but i like i'm so glad you brought that back up because as we went away from the gender conversation i was thinking about talking about this. I'm glad you brought it back up because so my wife's in the process of starting a business right now and seeing her in that process of a startup with our 20 month old has been humbling for me to watch because she can't get away from her. <laughs> like, like our daughter this morning was just like freaking crazy. Like, not crazy in a bad way, but just like excited and happy and just like we're sprinting around the house. And I got to leave to go to my office and I'm like, where does she get to go? And, and we have a nanny um, that helps um, probably need another. <laughs> and we actually are, you know, trying to find more ways to, to get her more time where she can focus uh, without distractions. There's such good things as a good distraction. And let me say that um, there's bad distractions and good distractions and family can be a good distraction, still distraction um, when you're trying to get something done. But I, it's, it's really opened my eyes. And so when you talked in the very beginning about this male versus female and the, and the roles that they have in society, I have so much incredible respect for mothers that are starting businesses and have podcasts and have blogs and are not even entrepreneurs are just excelling in their career, whatever that career may be. Um, so much respect because I think society has these set roles that have been set only because that's the way they've been set. <laughs> There's no like, I don't really know why, but the thought that I can just leave and go to my office today, versus if she needed to go work it's okay she has to find a nanny like there's something a little wrong with that like that's not okay um i don't know how to solve it like right off the bat and i don't think anyone does but i think there's something very interesting in this idea that we're talking about right now and that is you know the idea that i have a podcast called the breadwinner podcast and immediately when you say the word breadwinner like I would say a huge majority of people in the United States and probably the world would say that's a male, but that's so not the case in so many situations. And, and I have so many uh, friends where the female is the breadwinner of the household, but it's interesting that in those scenarios, the female is still taking care of the kids and still is getting the kids to, you know, daycare or to school and the lunch is packed and all this stuff and is still able uh, to be the breadwinner and, and do all those things. Um, I think it's, I think it's very, it's a very, again, complex, but it's very interesting and intriguing to me now, just in, in the space that I am. My number one goal 
when I came out of that dark place in 2014 and as I started to make good money and, and really kind of find myself in 2015, um, yeah, you know, I was newly married and my wife was working a job that she did not like. Um, she did well at, but she did not like. And my number one goal was to get her to where she didn't have to work. She could work because she wanted to work. And we knew that we wanted to have kids and things like that. And so we had a daughter and she's now 20 months old. And my wife basically came to me and she was like, I want to start a business. And I was fully, fully supportive. I was nervous but I was fully, fully supportive in that, um, in, in every aspect of that. But that was her choice. Like she, she chose that and to, to see her doing what she's doing and starting this new business and all of the things that go on in the beginning of starting a business and handling our child is I like I'm in awe. Like it's, it's, it's incredible. And I'm in such a, it's put, it's, it put, it's put her in such a good place in my mind um, to see her as a mother. That's incredible. Obviously that's incredible, but to see her as a mother, that's also going out and starting a business and doing this stuff is just like, to me, so incredible to watch. And again, the fact that she's doing it because she wants to, she doesn't have to do it. She doesn't have to do it, but she wants something that's hers. She wants something that she can, she can grow. And quite frankly, she wants to help empower other women entrepreneurs in our town as well as a part of that. Um, so I think it's interesting. Like it goes back so far, these gender roles that I don't know how you change it. Uh, and I don't know why they were started. You know, I, I haven't studied that, but I think it just kind of is what it is as far as the past And we just kind of have to look at moving forward. Like, how do we change some of those things? Like, how can I be a more supportive husband in handling stuff with my daughter in the mornings and handling stuff with my daughters in the afternoon and my daughter in the afternoon um, and taking her for, you know, half the day on a Saturday and on Sunday. So, so my wife can get, you know, work done or quite frankly, so my wife can just like relax and like have a mental break um, from just the constant, you know, everything, 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 all being super important right now. <laughs> um, so yeah, I think it's, it's a very interesting topic, but it's one that's very front of mind. So I'm glad that you brought it up and I'm glad that she'll probably listen to this and she's probably going to have me like take care of my daughter tomorrow morning, which is good. <laughs> so this conversation is everything. Like I felt emotional. Like I had chills. Yeah, me too. I wanted to cry. And me I too. was like, this conversation is everything. In fact, can we get your wife on the podcast? I want to talk about her new business. Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. Okay. So, wow. Like the last like 10 minutes, I was like, wow, (laughs) holy shit. Cause that's exactly how I feel though. From a female perspective, you know, my husband woke me up at five this morning and, you know, kissed me and was like, I hope you have a better day with Caden. That's our seven year old. He's like, I'll see you on Friday. And today's Tuesday. Yeah. And I'm like, awesome. That's how I felt. I was like, fucking awesome. You know? Yeah. And so these conversations need to come up more. So thank you for being open and real yeah, about well, it. Well, and I'll, and I'll say this too, like there's a, there's a practical side of this too that I don't want to neglect. So this idea of my wife starting a business, like I make good money doing what I do. And so I have to, and, and I look at a lot of things like, like a business, right? And so I look at, okay, I know what my time is worth and what I earn. And then I know the startup process of a business. And that's been something that I've had to struggle with in my own mind. And it's something that I've had to look at. Okay. Like, sure, babe. Like, yeah, I, I can not work those three hours today and and I can take our daughter Arden um, while you go do yours. And, and I have to, in my mind, I, I process the fact that like, I know what those three hours were worth and what I would have earned on my time. And I know what those three hours were worth in the startup process. And quite frankly, once it's up and running, I know what those three hours are worth and there's a gap. But I think the important thing is understanding that the gap really doesn't matter if it's important to them. And, and for me, like from day one, that's why I was so supportive in that is because quite frankly, if the business never made a penny, I was 1000% ecstatic about it because she was passionate about it. She is passionate about it. 
It's something she really wants. It's something that she's driven to do. I'm like, if it makes money, I'm like, mazel tov. Like, that's freaking awesome. And I think it will. Like, I know it will because she's incredible. But like, I think that that's a real thing that people struggle with in that. Like, like a husband saying, okay, I, I got to go now. I'll be back Friday or I got to go now. I'll be back tonight at 8 p.m. You handle this, this, and this, and this, and that because there is that period and there may be that gap for someone that would say that and okay, this is what I'm earning. This is what that person's earning and the value of time, that kind of thing. I think the interesting thing in that is it's kind of a catch 22. The only way that value of time can grow on this side is for the other side to allow it to grow and allow it to happen and to foster that. And and I think it's, it would be naive of me to say like that every relationship they come together and both are making equal amounts of money one way or the other, like, like we could be having this exact conversation with roles reversed and there would still be that, that complex that you would be thinking about, but to think that it's all just completely equal and that it's just about emotions, that it's just about feeling supportive. Like, no, like some, some of it's like, no, like, I need to do this meeting because like I need to make this money so that we can afford to fund this over here. And a lot of that's practical and it's stuff that I've, I've had to struggle with um, over the last you know couple months while she's been in the startup process. But I think the only way that you can have any type of breakthrough is to go through some type of struggle with things that you know is right. Uh, but I think if, again, back to what we talked about in the beginning, if the intent is right on the front end, um, then the other person should be pretty accepting and pretty um, accommodating to the fact that you're growing and you're learning and you're, and you're trying not to be an idiot. <laughs> every, <laughs> That's so true. And, and Kathy and I's instance, the financial situation has kind of flopped, you know, but we yeah. work from home and we have the option, but it's still, there's still like something missing there. Yeah. But, okay. Just to wrap up this podcast, Tyler, yes. thank you so much for your time. Okay. You are a fucking badass. Mm-hmm. But if people want to connect with you, I know that you're all over social media, but like, what's the first place that you send them to? Um, Instagram at Tyler Harris page, Facebook's at Tyler Harris page. Um, but if you, if anyone goes to Tyler Harris page.com, it's got all my links to all my social media and they can actually sign up. Um, we've got like this VIP where they get our newsletter that gives the best content from the week on Fridays. And it also gives content that only goes out on that newsletter. It doesn't go out through our normal channels of uh, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, all that. Uh, but Tyler Harris page.com will get them to pretty much everything. Awesome. And thank you so much for being real and open with us today on the Badass Week Podcast. Absolutely. It's been my pleasure. This is a conversation. I feel like I've grown in this conversation. So it's been awesome. Friend. Friend.